when you're photographing an aircraft or an automobile outdoors or a large shiny metallic object outdoors, you've got two basic sources of control. You've got the sky, which is given to you by nature, and you've got the light that you're providing, which more often than not is coming from, from your own strobes that you're providing. It may also come from reflectors, but for the purposes of this photograph, it's easier if we think of it from strobe. Because it's a gray day today, and we don't have the luxury of a beautiful sunset, we're going to simulate that sunset. And the best way that we can do that is to put a 30 magenta gel over the lens of the camera. Now, unfortunately, that would also make the white airplane go magenta. So to counter it, we're going to use a green gel on all the strobes. And green is the, is the color on the other side of the, the color wheel, so that we know that the, the green will neutralize the, the magenta. And it will make the object, it will give the light coming out of the strobe be white, which is what we want is white light. So we've got a 30 magenta filter over the lens. We've got a green gel on each of the strobes, which is bringing those strobes back to white light. And then every place where we want the light to be slightly warmer, we will put an, an orange gel over the green gel. The strobe is going to have a green gel to counter the 30 magenta on the camera. And it's also going to have a slight warming gel to warm up the face of the pilot and maybe some other element in the photograph that we're trying to show. With strobe, if we're using the strobe and we're balancing the strobe with the ambient light in the photograph, the power of the strobe is determined by the output of the strobe, which frequently we can vary. And it's also determined by the f-stop on the camera. So that if we, if we decide that we want to use f8 because f8 is the f-stop that will give us sufficient depth of field to hold sharpness from the front of the object to the back, and we know that, that f8 is a given the distance of the, the strobe from the object, we know that that's an f-stop that we can easily generate using the strobe equipment. We then set, we set the strobes for f8. We take a meter reading and get f8 with it that way. We set the lens for f8. And then we take an ambient overall light reading, and we, de we determine at f8 what is our shutter speed. You want the shutter speed to be equal to whatever F8 is, so that the background is the same light as the foreground. Or often you'll want to take it down a stop or two stops to make the background go just a little bit darker, which increases the dramatic quality of the photograph. And, and that light is changing very, very quickly, like every 30 seconds to a minute as the, as the, as the sun goes below the horizon. So a typical starting exposure could be a 15th of a second at F8. But for the purpose of our photograph, in order to increase the dramatic quality of it, if it's a 15th at f8, that means we'd want to shoot it at a 30th at 8 or a 60th at 8 in order to make the background go a little darker and have the foreground pop out just a little bit more. So if you have an assistant and he's calling out the light as it's changing, you know that the f8 is constant because the, the strobes are putting out a constant light output. So that doesn't have to change unless you want to bracket a third or a half a stop on either side of eight. And at that point, the only thing that you have to worry about is all other things being equal. And in this case, the, air, the airplane or the automobile hopefully isn't going anywhere. All other things being equal, the only other major value or variable that you have is the shutter speed dropping. And so as the light gets lower and lower, as it goes from a 30th at eight to a 15th at eight, to an eighth at eight, to a quarter at eight, and finally you might end up at five seconds or ten seconds at eight. You're continuing to lengthen your exposure and hold the, the f-stop and the light output of the strobe constant. Look back at me. As a photographer, it's very important that we understand all the controls and all the variables that we have at our command. And the principal controls are the type of film, daylight film, tungsten film, when to use which. Sometimes we want to use the wrong film for the right reasons, like shooting tungsten film in daylight conditions to make the, the background of the photograph intentionally go blue, to, to be able to bring lights into the picture, to gel those lights to either warm them up or cool them down, or maybe to, to add a color into the photograph. Uh, and I think, again, of the condition of a movie like Das Boot, where where they use gels very, very selectively and very intentionally to create a, a feeling of depth of a submarine, um, to, to put a filter on the lens to alter the overall mood of the picture. 
and then selectively change the color within the frame by, by putting, uh, putting strobes or, or hot lights somewhere in that photograph. Uh, to, and obviously to change the focal length of the lens, but that's one that's so obvious that most of us know about. That we, we have to know all these things, understand how they work, and know when to use the right ones for the right reasons. And sometimes it's using the wrong ones for the right reasons in order to create an effect. And these are the major controls and the major variables that we have as photographers. And sometimes, if we haven't done them for a while, we come back to the, old, the oldest ones, the simplest ones, like changing the f-stop on, on the lens or the shutter speed on the camera to give us a particular effect. But, but it's very equivalent to a painter having a palette with lots of colors, different types of paintbrushes, different materials to work with. These are the things that as photographers that we have at our command. And it's important, I feel, not only to understand each, each of these elements and how they work, but to be able to use them all and use them very quickly. Because often the client won't give you a lot of time or nature won't give you a lot of time. And you've not only got to be able to do it well, but you've got to be able to do it fast. And newspaper photographers aren't the only guys who have to be able to work fast. Commercial and advertising and editorial photographers also have to be able to work fast. And the sense of speed, I feel, relates back to a sense of craft. And the two, it's, it's one hand washing the other. These, these things go back and forth. They work, they, they work hand in hand with each other. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the next time you go out, the, the, the simpler it is to pull off and get it exactly the way you want it to be.